How about it now? How is everybody? It's a nice, warm, sunny day in southwest Virginia. Uh, it's uh, been raining off and on this past week. I haven't been able to get out to the workshop and uh, get much work done, but uh, get some videos done I was going to try to get up. So I'm waiting on some nicer weather, and it should be coming in the next few days. But in the interim, while it's muddy outside, I thought I'd uh, do a video talking about uh, the design of your timber frame. All right. Specifically, I'm going to start working with uh, king post trusses here. Now, I'm going to preface this. I'm not an engineer. And chances are, y'all ain't engineers either. And you don't want to run the risk of something falling on your head. So get an actual engineer uh, to sign off on plans. This is mostly what I'm what I use this tool for was to let me know when I had certain materials on hand, what I could realistically do with it. All right. Now I could go to an engineer and say, Hey, here's what I've got. And just make something work for me. Uh, but the reality is I'd like to be able to have a good idea of what my design realistically can be. So that's what I'd suggest using this for is, you know, look at the materials, you know, the, the logs and things that you can get, what size they are, what length you can get, etc. And let that be your guide, okay? And use this as a tool to help you design that. All right. Now, I'm going to just briefly go over what this is going to need. Uh, and then we're going to go through and take a quick look at uh, King Post Trust. You can actually see what it's asking for and how that relates on the trust itself. But this is a tool. It's designed by, I believe, Don P. on the Forestry Forum. Uh, and if you are looking at timber framing, log cabin building, just general homesteading, uh, I'd suggest going there. There's outstanding people who are more than willing to help. They're not going to do engineering work for you because they don't want to be sued either. Uh, but they will go through and offer advice on how to build things and just give you some good general advice. Uh, outstanding uh, group, uh, outstanding people. So this is a tool in the toolbox. They actually have a toolbox on the website. So we're going to look at uh, how to go through and uh, build this. So what I'm using, got my standard uh, Windows calculator. Uh, that's going to help me calculate uh, my load here. You'll need to know the roof pitch that you're wanting, uh, the span of your truss. Uh, we'll talk about that in a moment, uh, as well as the depth and width of the top cord. Again, we'll go over that. Uh, and then the width and depth of the web or strut and then what species uh, you have available as far as what type of wood you've got available here uh, notice it's defaulted to number two in these that's because unless you've got a grader uh, to go out and tell you this is number one this is structural etc or they call it select structural ss um, unless you get a grader to go through and give you that information always assume number two you want to start at the base and work your way up Okay, so you want to make sure you get that safety net built in. All right. So with that in mind, we're going to go take a look at the anatomy of a truss. All right. So just going to go over a quick anatomy of a king post truss. Okay. So these two items here are your top cords. Okay. Now. This entire section here, I'm going to highlight it in red, or I got the red bar there. That is your bottom cord. Now, this one uh, is in two segments. You see, you've got one side and then the other side. All right. And the king post is in the middle. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and highlight that. So, when I'm putting in green, that is your king post. Okay. And these two items here, I'm going to highlight these in yellow are your webs or struts. Okay, you will commonly hear them called struts. They're also commonly called webs. Uh, it seems to be in the timber framing side of it, if you're dealing with somebody who's building the thing, as far as the uh, construction worker himself, uh, you know, the framer, they're going to call them struts. Uh, but if you deal more with the engineering side of it, they call it webs. Okay, so just be aware that it's the, generally for our purpose, that's the same meaning. There are differences between those uh, when you get into truss design, but again, for our purpose, they have the same meaning in this case. Okay. Now, the top cord, its entire job is to support your roof. 
okay just to it's what you're going to attach your roofing material to uh, you know your as far as your uh, rafters etc uh, you know so your purlins and so on just depending upon your design all right but at the end of the day uh, that's where your roofing material, be it metal, shingles, etc., is going to be attached. Okay. Now, the bottom cord right here in red, its entire job is to prevent when you put your roof on, when you put this truss on, and put the roof on, from all of this collapsing and pushing your walls apart. Okay. All right. Because what happens here, I'm going to throw in a couple of arrows and we'll grab gray. So what happens is this is the force you're going to be seeing. Okay. So what happens in this case is that you're, when you go through and put a load on this, as far as your top cord is going to want to push out. Okay. So what happens is your bottom cord is meant to tie all of this together. All right. So its entire job is to prevent uh, when you put uh, you know, your roofing material on, you get uh, your snow load. It's going to push down like this. And what's going to happen is, just like any old lever, if you start pushing down, it's going to want to, since this is longer, it's going to want to push out on your walls. Well, this entire job is, you know, this bottom cord, is to prevent that from happening, prevent this from moving, and prevent it from pushing your walls apart. Okay, so when it pushes down, you're going to have outward force. So this entire job of this bottom cord is to go through and reverse that. I go through and I'll pick this color. So the bottom cord is to counteract that. Okay. So that's its entire job is to counteract these outward forces. Okay. Your struts, uh, they're going to prevent sagging uh, from your top cord. In this case, this is an big span here so they're probably not as necessary in this particular truss but as this gets longer uh, again if you've you know done any work before you know once you get into about 12 or 16 feet uh, sagging becomes a major issue and you really have to go through and start uh, stacking you know as far as your beams etc uh, pretty closely to avoid that sagging all right so that's what your struts are for is to prevent sagging of the top cord your king post is to prevent sagging of the bottom cord. All right. So its main job is to, you know, the bottom cord is going to want to sag. It's going to want to pull down. And the king post uh, essentially keeps it in place. It's pulling back up on it, so to speak. From a force perspective, it's pulling up. It's not really. It's just holding it in place. But it counteracts or counterbalances those downward forces that sag uh, that uh, your bottom cord naturally wants to do. So quick overview of a truss. Uh, I am not an engineer. Uh, that is just a quick overview of it. There are tons of videos on YouTube if you want to dig into this more and really get into the uh, the engineering side of it uh, and the physics side of it. Feel free to you know go through and watch those. All right, but uh, I just want to go through and give you a quick rundown of the forces you're encountering. Of, you know how that king post has got to be designed to handle those. All right, thank you. Let's go ahead and continue on with the calculations. Okay, so thanks everybody for sticking around uh, through the explanation. Hopefully I didn't bore you to death. Uh, I know I tend to ramble. So the very first thing you need to do is uh, know the span of your truss, meaning what's the open area that you want to cover. Okay, so for mine, I'm going to say I'm going to have uh, the width of my roof is going to be 24 feet. Count your overhangs. Okay, overhangs count. So make sure you count that. But I'm going to have 24 feet. The spacing for my trusses are, I'm shooting for 12 feet. All right, if you've got smaller material, maybe you need to go through and look at uh, spacing that a little bit closer together so that uh, you can get away with uh, the smaller material. All right, so let's jump in. So very first thing you need to do is you need to go through and uh, determine what is your live and what is your dead load. All right, dead load, if you were to look that up, is the weight of your roof structure. All right, so your trusses, your purlins, um, you know, your rafters, you know, depending on your design, there's different terminology there based upon the orientation of them, uh, but basically your roof material. Okay, if you're doing a metal roof and shingles, etc. 
So that's usually specified uh, in my area. Mine is specified at 15 pounds per square foot. Okay. Now your live load is going to be your snow load. Typically it's a temporary load placed on the structure. All right. So what that means is, is simply that, you know, it, this is a load uh, that's going to be on it, but it's not permanent. Meaning that uh, on average, you're probably going to have just that dead load. And then, you know, during winter time, you're going to get some heavy snow and it can accumulate in areas. So that's your live load. All right. Because it's not going to carry that year round. All right. So for my area, that comes out to 15 pounds per square foot from a dead load and then 25 pounds per square foot from a live load. So that's a total of 40 pounds per square foot. All right. So the very first thing we need to do, I've got that, is I need to figure out how many square feet my truss is going to support. So 24 times 12 foot width or span in between them. So that gives me 288 square feet. Okay. So 24 foot width, uh, wide building and my posts, uh, or excuse me, my trusses are on 12 foot centers. Okay. So 288 square feet times 40. It's going to give me 11,520 pounds. Okay. So got that information. Now let's go to the calculator itself. 11,520. So you need to determine the pitch of your roof. So I'm going to go with an 812. All right. So I need to determine the span of my truss in inches. So back to the calculator, 24 feet times 12 inches. Or I should have thought of that to start with. It was the same. Oh, well. So 288. Okay. So that's the span of my truss in inches. Now, what I need to go through and do is start figuring out what materials I have. Okay. So let's go through and say that the depth of my top cord is eight inches and the width of it is eight inches. So I'm going to use an eight by eight. All right. Now the web, uh, let's go with width of six and a depth of seven. So I'm going to go with a six by seven. All right. Eastern white pine is what I'm using. All right. And let's go in and show results. Okay. So what I'm looking at in this case is it failed. Okay. So simply put, mine cannot go through and work with an eight by eight. Well, let's say I've got oak. All right. So let's say I do have some oak, but it's limited and let's go through and to take a look at that. So I've got red oak. Okay. I recalculate. I actually pass. Okay. So that lets me know that in this instance, oak would work for it. So let's say again, you know, I've got a mixture of white pine and oak or something else. So maybe that tells me for certain areas uh, of my uh, frame, I need to use higher quality materials. Okay. So let's say I can no longer use that for my posts. And posts are, you don't necessarily need oak in many instances. Most posts are significantly larger than necessary to accommodate that. All right. Uh, the loads they're under. So just an example. All right. So let's go back to my white pine. And let's take a look at that. All right. So if I increase it and say the depth is 10 inches, I pass that time. So eight by eight doesn't work, but eight by 10 does. Okay. So that goes through and lets me know that uh, I, what dimensions I can work with. If you can't get an eight by 10, okay. Then you go back to the calculator. And let's go through and say, all right, so it's 24 feet, but let's say I reduce it to eight foot on center between my trusses. So 24 times eight. Okay, that gives me 192. All right, so my span is still staying the same, 288. 
but now let's do my load here. So now I'm down to 7,680. All right, so let's go back to that 8x8. Eight eight. All right, that passes. So again, if you just simply can't get those bigger pieces, all right, maybe you need more trusses up at the top. Okay, so again, contact an engineer, but this is a good way of helping you uh, figure out what materials you have on hand and can it roughly do what you need done okay if you're just dead set that it's got to be a certain way contact an engineer there are ways they can go through and uh, and make these things work there are companies that will go out there and build it and when I say ways to make it work there are more advanced uh, trust designs that they can come up with uh, to go through and handle those loads that might be able to work uh, or again uh, you might look at just getting a company to go through and uh, design and build and stamp those trusses for you the advantage of that is you know what it's going to handle you know your spacing and it's got an engineering stamp on it when you get it and all you're going to do is put it in place so that's another option so excellent pieces to go through and uh, take a look at and an excellent tool to you know, utilize to help you design out and learn, can you do what you want to do with the materials you have? One final thing I'm going to go through and point out here is if you go through and look at it, so I've got my rafter pitch, it's eight. If I lower that to a four, all right, so you've got bottom cord tension, so we're at 4,000. I'm going to lower it from an eight to a four, and let's calculate. I'm now at 86. 8,640 pounds, all right? So that rafter pitch can have a heavy impact in the tension forces that go through uh, and, you know, impact the lower portions of this truss, okay? So by going through and having a lower pitch roof, if you still have a high snow load, it gives it more leverage uh, as opposed to just simply sliding off, all right? So some other things to uh, take in mind, a lower pitch uh, versus a higher pitch, that's going to affect your, uh, your, the length of your rafter as well. So go through and, again, take a look at these, experiment with this information in this calculator, and you know, just look at the materials you've got on hand and see what you can design out. Uh, again, this is not a substitute for an engineer, but it will help you kind of design out your frame and let you know what uh, you can do with the materials on hand. All right. Well, hey, thank you and good luck. Stay safe.